Opening night rosters are getting set, and as the pieces fall into place, the outlook of both the Edmonton Oilers and the rest of the Pacific Division becomes clearer and clearer. I'm going to talk about the Oilers roster briefly, and then I'm going to run through the division. But first, please hit that subscribe button. Nearly 9 out of every 10 people who watch our videos aren't going to subscribe, so please support us by clicking that button. Be one of the ones that obviously helps us out. The Edmonton Oilers have finished second place in their division in each of the last five seasons. I'm going to talk about that division and the rest of it first, but I wanted to talk about Noah Philp to kick things off. Philp has been so good in training camp in the preseason. The Oilers placed four more players on waivers yesterday. Colin Delia, Ben Gleason, Philip Kemp, and Lane Peterson. James Hamblin went to Bakersfield on loan. So Noah Philp remains one of the forwards still at camp. And at the end of the day, this is a guy who, who doesn't need waivers. And and I, I do think he's performed a little bit better than Raphael Lavoie. I think he's been a lot better than Drake Kajula. I bet you we see both him and Vasily Paul Colson on this opening night roster. Philp hasn't played hockey for two of the last four seasons. And he didn't play in 2021 because of COVID. And then he sat out last year. And, and so, uh, to me, this is one of the most out-of-nowhere training camp additions that I've seen from any team of late. It, it didn't really look like he was on anybody's radar. But you know what? He's shown up here, and he's earned himself a spot, and I think that's a commendable thing. So I would not be surprised at all to see Noah Philp. He survived this period of cuts. I'm not surprised to see the players that went down to Bakersfield did. Noah Philp, to me, is an Edmonton Oiler. So let's quickly move on and take a look around the division. Obviously, this is going to be some not Oiler stuff, but for Edmonton, like I said, second place in the division in each of the last five seasons. And while playoff success is what, at the end of the day, is going to matter more than anything else, any team that's eyeballing a deep playoff run, in my opinion, needs to be aware of the, the potential ramifications that having home ice advantage could have. And so taking a quick look backwards, Edmonton finished the 2024 playoffs with a 15-10 and 10 record. They went 8-4 and four at home and 7-6 and six on the road and crucially that road record includes going 1-3 and three in Florida during the Stanley Cup final so since 2021 Edmonton have a much better winner, winning percentage on the road than at home that's not surprising and think about some of the massive playoff games Edmonton have lost on the road over the years they went down 2-0 lost game 7 in the final last year but even the year before they lost that crucial game 5 in Vegas in the 2023 second round and they came back home with a 2-0 hole because they played the first two games in Colorado in the 2022 Western Conference conference finals. So to me, uh, the Edmonton Oilers in this regular season, as much as anything, obviously they need to get into the playoffs, but I would love Edmonton to finish first place in the Pacific. And realistically, there's a top tier of three teams in this Pacific division. It includes Edmonton, Vancouver, and Vegas. And anybody hoping to win a bet on the Pacific division winner for the regular season would be wagering on one of these three teams. So taking a look first at the winners of the Pacific last year, that's Vancouver. And the Canucks obviously were beaten by the Oilers in last year's second round. And these Vancouver Canucks are a pretty different team from that Vancouver Canucks. You saw high profile free agents like Elias Lindholm and Nikita Zadorov flock off to Boston, but they added Jake DeBrusque, Danton Heinen, and Daniel Sprong, and Vinny DeHarnay. And I think those players, along with a guy like Derek Forbort, who they signed to shore up the defense in the spot of Ian Cole, they've got the potential to alleviate the damage of, of the departures. And Vancouver's roster looks strong enough for them to compete, but the massive variable right now is their goaltending. As of right now, Thatcher Demko's status is completely unknown. This injury was week to week, nearly six months months ago. And while early signs are that Arthur Shigalovs looks pretty ready for the challenge, the 23-year-old has just nine regular season games under his belt. So Shigalovs and the goaltending may be Vancouver's biggest question mark, but it's not the only one. I'll predict one thing about Vancouver for sure. The Vancouver Edmonton games this season are going to have an extra level of intensity. They are one of Vancouver's, or sorry, one of Edmonton's two really really big challengers for first place in the Pacific this year and the other Pacific powerhouse obviously is Vegas and and they're starting to have all the earmarks right now at least from my perspective of a team nearing the back half of a competitive window especially with their departures over the summer uh, and you look at the team that is still together Shea Theodore, Alex Petrangelo, Mark Stone, Thomas Hurdle, Jack Eichel, William Carlson and Aiden Hill all missed pretty significant time last season due to injuries and a pair of their more durable high-end players, Chandler Stevenson and Jonathan Marcheseau, both found new homes in unrestricted free agency. 
Vegas's defense is as strong as anyone's when they're healthy, but the questions about the forward depth are going to have to be asked. Like, Stevenson, Marcia, so Paul Cotter, and Anthony Mantha all left, meaning Vegas is going to be relying on one or more of youngster Brendan Brisson, Alexander Holtz, and Pavel Dorofeyev to take a step forward into a top six role. Looking at the goaltending, I mentioned Aiden Hill. They lost Logan Thompson as that that's going to hurt the goaltending depth. I do believe in Hill as being a full-time starter, but Akira Schmid and Ilya Samsonov being brought in to provide backup support. Both could be very strong backups, or they both could not fill that role properly. We've seen a wide variety of play from both of these goaltenders over the last few years. So of the three teams that are at the top of the division, I'd say Vegas would be my number three. You can't control and you can't predict injuries, but you can't help but wonder if Vegas's lack of forward depth is a disaster waiting to happen if the Knights lose even half as many man games this season to injury as they did last season. I'd say the Oilers look superior to both Vegas and Vancouver. Looking at the Pacific as a whole, I think the biggest threat to Edmonton at least reaching the Western Conference Final again would be the Vancouver Canucks with a healthy Thatcher Demko. Even considering the result of the offer sheet drama, I think Edmonton lost a lot less than Vegas and Vancouver over the offseason. The biggest wild card in the Pacific is no doubt about it, the Los Angeles Kings. Drew Doughty's injury complicates a Kings defense score that are going to be relying heavily on two youngsters, rookie Brant Clark and Jordan Spence, to shore up the right side of the defense in Doughty's absence. We saw Quinton Byfield take a pretty big step forward last season, but following Pierre-Luc Dubois' departure, he's going to need to take on an even bigger role and take another step forward this season. Darcy Kemper was the guy who came back in the Dubois trade, and he's expected to be the starter, even after a pair of seasons where the now 34-year-old Kemper showed some serious signs of regression so much in the same way the success of Vegas could rely on those forwards taking a step forward into top six role Los Angeles could be asking the same of somebody like an Alex Laferriere or an Alex Turcotte or Akil Thomas or maybe even Warren Fogel because they lost somebody like Pierre-Luc Dubois and I don't think they really replaced him for a with a like for like replacement the other team in this wild card category is Seattle and it seems like Seattle is going to be hard to predict that 2023 playoff series win over Colorado has made this team want to be competitive but for that to happen, a good number of players are going to have to be counted upon for a bounce back this season. Jordan Eberle dropped 19 points between last year and the previous year. Matty Beneers dropped 20. Yanni Gore dropped 15. And Jared McCann regressed by 11 goals. And they, they threw out a lot of money in free agency at Chandler Stevenson and Brandon Montour. And what this team lacks in star power, especially now with the additions, I'd say they make up for it in depth. And if a couple of those players that I just mentioned have better seasons this coming season than last year, I wouldn't be surprised to see Seattle creep into a wild card spot. And if that's the case, obviously, that's a potential first round matchup for the Oilers. And I'm not trying to bring in playoff oppositions into the mix yet, but the Kraken could give the teams at the top of the Pacific some headaches in the regular season too. Don't forget as well, they've got Shane Wright down the middle with everything to prove this season. Just a quick word on the last three teams in the Pacific that are all going to have something very positive to watch out for this year. For the Calgary Flames, again, it's not going to be playoffs, but Connor Zary and Dustin Wolf will both get significant elevated roles as this Flames team will continue to get younger. I think Craig Conroy has done an excellent job so far of building up a group of really solid young players, and I think they got their best one yet in the 2024 draft. Anaheim aren't going to be competing in the Pacific this year, but this is a team that aren't far off from causing some serious problems as well. The enigma that is Trevor Zegras aside, it's not far-fetched to expect Mason McTavish, Leo Carlson, Pavel Mendyukov, and Olin Zellweger to take big steps forward this year. Newly acquired Cutter Goche has a lot to prove too after telling the Flyers to kick rocks last year. Finally, the last team of the Pacific is San Jose, and rookie centers Macklin Celebrini and Will Smith are the two things that'll get Sharks fans excited this year, but unfortunately beyond those two things, it gets thin. Expect them to be the punching bag of the division as they endure what is probably going to be the worst of their rebuild. I know that was a lot about some non-Oilers teams, but I personally think it's important to have the finger on the pulse of the rest of the division, I think this is Edmonton's division to lose. I'm a fan of this Vancouver Canucks team. I like a lot of what the Vegas Golden Knights have on their roster as well. But overall, Edmonton are the strongest. And if the Edmonton Oilers aren't going to win the division this season, I think that's going to be disappointing. That's what they should be aiming for in the regular season, especially, as I said, considering the potential ramifications that home ice advantage could pose in the playoffs. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching.